Do you want to know the pros and cons of living in Chesapeake, Virginia? Well, that's what we're talking about today and we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area and that goes from Virginia Beach through Williamsburg and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. So I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of living in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I used to live in Chesapeake and so I wanna tell you my thoughts so you have a real good balanced look at what life is like in Chesapeake. So because Chesapeake is so large, there are different parts that feel totally different to each other and based on where you live, you might have a totally different experience to someone else. So we're gonna go through the pros and cons of each section that will give you more context and a layered understanding of what it's like to live here. So first I'm going to share my screen with you and show you on the map where Chesapeake is in Hampton Road. So you see this big section here, this, this red line, this is all of Chesapeake. It's a massive, massive land size. And so because of that, there are different spots that feel totally different, like I mentioned before. And so we're going to go into the different parts. There is the technically called Central Chesapeake, which is where South Norfolk is right here. And this whole section around Indian River Road around 464, that's section one. Then section two is South Chesapeake, which is encompasses a large swath of the, the southern part. Like all this large area here is South Chesapeake. And then going further north and west, there is what's called Western Branch. This section here, which is, again, different than the rest of it. We're gonna break that down as well, pros and cons of that. So number one is Central Chesapeake right here. So this is what I would consider the smallest part of Chesapeake, but it has some very distinct pros and cons. So we'll start with the pros. Number one is that it is extremely central. So Central Chesapeake is central to Hampton Roads in the south side, where it is right next to Norfolk, like literally a few minutes away from Norfolk. It also right next door to Virginia Beach. So you can drive five, 10 minutes and get to Norfolk, five, 10 minutes and get to Virginia Beach. And you're also pretty close to the rest of, of Chesapeake. 15 to 20 minute drive, you're down into that meaty section on the, on the bottom part of Chesapeake. So you're very accessible to other parts of uh, Hampton Roads and the south side specifically. Next one is it's cheap. It's the cheapest part of Chesapeake. Now the median home sales price in central Chesapeake is about $270,000. And you'll see how much of a difference that is compared to the rest of Chesapeake moving forward. But it's the cheapest. It also has some of the smallest house, house options. So if you don't want a house that's four bedrooms, two and a half baths, or like a larger lot size, you can get that in central Chesapeake, but there is a larger swath of lower size houses as well. Three bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath. The next is it has kind of a small town vibe in parts. So Norfolk Highlands especially, I'll show you on the map where Norfolk Highlands is. This whole section here, like on the northern section right near the 264 south of there, going all through over near Indian River High School. This is what I would consider Norfolk Highlands, this whole swath right in here. And this area has a lot of natives, a lot of people that have lived here since they were born uh, for decades. And it has a very vibrant page. It has local restaurants in this area like Pancakes and Things, Irwin's Pharmacy, which is a, like a combination of pharmacy and restaurant. So people that have lived here for a long time find these places like staples to the area. In addition to that, you've got South Norfolk, which it sounds like Norfolk. It's not Norfolk, it's Chesapeake. This area is a very historic part of town. It's got a real deep and thorough uh, webpage. If you want to look at their website, you can see all the information about South Norfolk. It's got a real solid Civic League. Lots of history in South Norfolk and lots of older style houses, Victorian craftsman style houses. This area originated back well before the 1900s. So now the cons to living in central Chesapeake. Number one is it feels kind of run down. It's showing its age. A lot of places have like older strip malls. It just feels tired in a lot of places. So while there is a lot of history here, a lot of uh, locals that love it here, it doesn't change the fact that it could use just a lot of newer things built in the area. South Norfolk has some spots that there are some new developments being built up in there. New construction is coming in random spots, but it's just not enough to do a full scale rehab in the whole area. The city is also planning to put in some new parks and access points near water in or around the Norfolk Highlands area, but that's still taking some time to do. So things are happening, but not nearly as fast as one might want, especially if you're planning to live in uh, central Chesapeake. Now, one of the cons to living in central Chesapeake is it's boring. So Ch central Chesapeake is a very functional place to live and it's very affordable compared to other parts of town, but not much going on. It's outside, a little bit of shopping, some restaurants, restaurants nearby. There's not much nightlife going on in central Chesapeake. You have to go to downtown Norfolk or to Virginia Beach for that kind of stuff. And so then check crime in the areas as well because you might not like the, all the parts of central Chesapeake. And so based on what your comfort range is, you might not be as excited about different parts of it. But at the same time, that can lead to some good value in some spots that are really, really great. And so because a lot of these houses are older, it leads to the next one, which is there are a lot of flipped houses. Now, I'm not just downplaying all of the renovated house market, but my point here is that 
I'm not a personal fan of a lot of houses that are flipped. A lot of times, especially in markets that are increasing, uh, flippers are trying just to get in and get out and do whatever they can just to sell the house and make the most profit as possible. It does often lead to uh, a, a average at best product at the end. So just be careful sometimes with flipped houses because you'll see a lot of those in central Chesapeake. Next is the Jordan Bridge. Now the Jordan Bridge is a bridge that connects from South Norfolk over into Portsmouth. And it's a sneaky bridge because it's kind of off into the corner of South Norfolk and you don't realize you're on the bridge almost until it's too late. And so my point here is it's a toll bridge and it's 275 to go across one way. And so it's very easy to, to make one wrong turn, end up on the bridge too far to where you can't turn around. You have to cross the bridge and then turn back around and go back over again and you're spending over $5 for that one uh, missed turn. So it's a nice bridge and if you look on the ratings of the bridge, which seems weird, who does that? I do. You'll see that it's it's ranked really low, the ones who rank it low are the ones that don't like it because of the toll. The ones that do like it, like it because it's a great view and you can run across it back and forth, great views uh, as you're running. I used to do this all the time. Now let's shift attention over to the south part of Chesapeake. Now this is a large area. I'm gonna go back to the map and show you what I'm talking about here. So you've got the central Chesapeake area here, then the south Chesapeake is all through here. Now I'm gonna break it down in terms of school district so you can make it easier to digest in pieces. Now remember one, you've got Grape Ridge on the far uh, eastern side, you can see Great Bridge here and here. Then you've got on the northern side, you've got Indian River and then uh, Oscar Smith that's closer to this, the central Chesapeake area. And then on the very southern parts, you've got Hickory, you've got Grassfield, and then you've got Deep Creek on the southwestern section. So the south Chesapeake area has a totally different feel than the central Chesapeake area. Number one is the majority of central Chesapeake has a lot of country, wide open space. And you can see based on this, the all the green uh, in the map, you'll see how much space there is. A lot of country, a lot of custom homes, a lot of farmland, and a lot of individual shopping centers that are built way out and random in different parts of the area. As new construction has been built, as Chesapeake has grown, the development line from the like the northern sections of the city all the way down has increased and you'll start seeing more areas that used to be country become more suburban and lots of shopping. So you see that development line coming down further south. And so as you go towards like this, uh, that green area, Great Bridge East, just south of there, over in to uh, Balahack Road, Benefit Road, all these areas down here, this is all country. But north of that, this is where a lot of the subdivisions are, suburban areas, strip malls, shopping, restaurants, and all that. Another pro to living in Chesapeake, in South Chesapeake, is there's a lot of growth. So one of the big pros to being in Chesapeake is it feels like a small town, even though it has a lot of people in it. The population of Chesapeake is just over 242,000 people right now, which is now bumping up into the population of Norfolk. It's almost uh, surpassing Norfolk into the second largest populated city in Hampton Road. This is largely because of what's happening in Southern Chesapeake. So you, have, you have vast pieces of land, country, and then suburbia. So you've got places like in the 90s, Greenbrier was the place where all the people started wanting to live and it got built up in the 90s. Then you've got places like uh, Hickory. And you have neighborhoods like Etheridge Manor, uh, Hanbury, there's a long road down south, Johnstown Road, Battlefield Boulevard. There's a whole large area of Chesapeake that got built up in the 90s. And then as we went further south, South, the 2000s, 2010s, new construction is being built. Going into the southern parts of Chesapeake over in an area called Edinburgh, which is like just south of Great Bridge, just south of Hickory. Uh, you've got a lot of like, you know, your essentials, Target, Walmart, some restaurants is in there as well. A lot of houses being built in here. That's kind of the lower development line now. But the whole section of Great Bridge, Hickory, uh, Grassfield, all these school districts in the bottom part here, there's a lot of uh, new construction that's happening. And so this is the highest to me concentration of new construction uh, and new growth happening anywhere on the south side of Hampton Roads. And mixed in with all that, you've got a, an old country town that has, still has a lot of the same roots in it. So you have a lot of the small town things like festivals, parades. Uh, you've got the, the strawberry festival is really popular every year. This Chesapeake Ju Jubilee, it's a very popular festival, again, that happens uh, near Greenbrier. There are fall festivals, a Christmas a parade, a lot of stuff that kind of makes you feel like you're in a small town. And on that note, the next pro is that that it has a lot of awesome parks. I love running around uh, Oak Grove Park, which is about one and a third miles all the way around the lake. And then next you've got Chesapeake City Park, where that Chesapeake Jubilee is, City View Park, the Great Dismal Swamp, Bells Mill Park, the Chesapeake Arboretum is great, and also the Great Bridge Lock Park, amongst other smaller parks as well. But I love Chesapeake 
Chesapeake's saturation of parks. Now, Virginia Beach has a lot more parks next door, but for what you're getting and for what, the, what it feels like in Chesapeake, you have some real nice parks that are very, very hard to beat. Which leads me to the next pro, which is all your needs are gonna be met in the South Chesapeake area. So you've got shopping centers all over the place. If you wanna live in South Chesapeake, you're gonna have five to 10 minute drives to a lot of places like uh, Sam's Club, plenty of Walmart access, Target, restaurants. You have access to Greenbrier, which is in the, uh, like the eastern section of Chesapeake, just north of uh, Great Bridge. Great Bridge has shopping. Hickory has shopping. Grassfield does too. Like, you have less in like Deep Creek, for example, in the southwestern corner of Chesapeake or in the very southern parts where it's country. But the further up you go, you're right in the middle of suburbia. You're right in the middle of all kinds of stuff. And it is an awesome place to raise a family. One of the reasons being because of the access to shopping, restaurants, and all of your essentials. And one of the best parts of the shopping experience on all of living in South Chesapeake is Greenbrier. Greenbrier is like this, the epicenter of what was the biggest part and most popular part of, of uh, Chesapeake in the 90s, but it still has lots of, like all of the big box stores, all of the strip malls, all the, like bunch of restaurants, a lot of stuff that you might like if you wanna live right in the middle of Chesapeake and get access to, to things. And it has some great houses in Greenbrier as well. And so I love living around Greenbrier. It's a great sp spot to be. You're also right next door to Virginia Beach. Next one, school districts are in super high demand. Now, not all of them. The specific ones that are in the most high demand are Grassfield, Hickory, and Great Bridge. Now, there are others that are in various uh, rankings on niche.com, greatschools.org, like for example, uh, Indian River High School, Oscar Smith, Deep Creek. These aren't as highly ranked as Hickory, Grassfield, and Great Bridge. Now, they're great spots, and they also have usually the largest land sections uh, of South Chesapeake. They include those country sections in the bottom. A lot of the suburban areas that we've been talking about so far. As a general rule, it's generally low crime in a lot of parts of South Chesapeake. People come here for the schools, people come here for the relaxation, the comfort, but at the same time, it's extremely quiet and that leads to a lot of benefits, including a lot of times low crime. Now let's shift to the cons. <laughs> the pros sometimes lead to cons. Number one is it's the most expensive part of Chesapeake in almost all of the Hampton Roads area. The median sales price for a house, single family detached house in South Chesapeake right now is $451,000. And if you see on the graph, you see it shot up even most, more recently. That's to me partly because of how much new construction has been built and those prices for new construction has been generally higher than other uh, houses. So you see it just a sh it shoots up quite a bit. So it's usually still at the highest priced area of anywhere in Chesapeake and a lot of parts of uh, Hampton Roads. And one of the cons to living in South Chesapeake is it's boring. <laughs> so South Chesapeake is boring for different reasons. You're in the country or more in the suburbs in South Chesapeake. You've got a lot of houses. You've got a lot of open space, a lot of country areas, and a lot of nature stuff too, but not much nightlife. Things close pretty early. Some restaurants, but not a ton. And some decent amount of shopping, but nothing too extravagant. There's a little bit of golf in Chesapeake, you know, in South Chesapeake, especially in all part of Western Branch. But otherwise, you may have to go to Suffolk for that, or Virginia Beach, or Norfolk for that as well. So one of the benefits though to living in South Chesapeake is that you're close to other cities that might have more of those things to do like Virginia Beach with the beach, downtown Virginia Beach, or all the other things like history stuff in Virginia Beach as well as Norfolk, lots of history there, or uh, downtown Norfolk, lots of nightlife in downtown Norfolk as well, and Ghent. So a lot of other stuff outside of South Chesapeake and Chesapeake as a whole, but not specifically necessarily in Chesapeake itself. Next is the sneaky tolls and bridges. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's a bridge here on Route 17, the Red Veterans Bridge that connects the southern part of Chesapeake all the way up, up closer to the northern part of Chesapeake. This is a new toll over the last few years over the Elizabeth River. Next, you've got the Locks Bridge, which is over on this side on uh, Battlefield Boulevard near a very historic battlefield in the Revolutionary War. This is not a toll, but this is a bridge that goes up regularly every day and it backs up traffic. You've got the High Rise Bridge that wraps around near Deep Creek into parts of Greenbrier. This doesn't rise and is not a toll, but it does congest traffic quite a bit this area and it's being widened, doubled in size, so that will help a lot with traffic. Then you have the Centerville Turnpike Bridge, which is which is in Great Bridge that connects on Centerville Turnpike like up from the close to the Greenbrier area all the way down south as well. And this one is also, it also goes up uh, and down regularly every day as well. So if you're on the southern section of, Green, of uh, Chesapeake, especially the further south you go, you'll either have to deal with a toll or a bridge that might uh, raise. And so if you want the straightest route 
to another part of Chesapeake or another part of Hampton Roads, you might, might have to deal with uh, one of these bridges or tolls based on where you are. Another con is that based on where you are, it can be a long drive to other parts of town. It can be 20, 30 plus minutes to Virginia Beach. It can be, you know, 30 plus minutes over even to Suffolk. It can be almost an hour plus to the peninsula, Hampton, Newport News. So living in South Chesapeake and then commuting all the way up to the peninsula is a really tall tale. I usually don't recommend that as an example. Now, people, am I missing anything here? The pros, the cons to anywhere in Chesapeake? If so, comment below. I want everybody to be able to pitch in to make sure the people that are planning to move and live here get a good, accurate perspective of what it's like to live in Chesapeake. Now let's shift attention over to living in the West Chesapeake area. And this area is considered also Western Branch. It has some really big positives in it. Number one is living in Western Branch has a similar feel to living in South Chesapeake. And that's a positive because it has a real quiet atmosphere in a lot of places. Uh, it's got the same kind of suburb feel, a lot of residential areas, but shopping very close by. So you have that same accessibility, same comfort in the style of house and neighborhood that you might like. The next, living in this part of Chesapeake, you're very convenient to the peninsula and the south side of Hampton Road. So you're close to Interstate 664, which is uh, takes you across the Monitor Merrimack Bridge Tunnel over over to the peninsula, uh, where the Hampton, Newport News, and Williamsburg are located. But you're also close to Interstate 64 and 264 that takes you all the way through the other parts of Chesapeake and uh, Virginia Beach and Portsmouth. So you're very close to both of those. You're not super close to, to either, but you can get to either one relatively quickly, especially the peninsula. You can be in the pen to the peninsula in less than 15 minutes in a lot of cases, and you can be in Virginia Beach in about 30, 35 minutes or so in some spot. Now the next is living in Chesapeake on this side of town, there are some some similarly ranked school districts here that are in some pretty high demand. So Western Branch High School is pretty high on niche.com. Check the rankings out for yourself too, but that whole area is a place where you can pivot if you don't want to be in Hickory, Grassfield, Great Bridge, and live in that section of Chesapeake. Living in Western Branch, living in that part of Chesapeake can be a big bonus because you're paying less for a house, but you're getting a great school district. So living in Chesapeake on the west side allows you to get what's what I call Greenbrier Light, which is similar to Greenbrier and the Greenbrier area of Chesapeake. Peak, but on this side, it has the same kind of thing, like a Best Buy, a shopping mall, other things, other like Home Depot, the big box stores, again, restaurants in a very centrally located section of town. I'll show you on the map so you can see what I'm talking about. This whole section here is Chesapeake Square, which is very similar to the Greenbrier area over here. Greenbrier, it's again, Greenbrier light because Greenbrier is a large, real busy part of, it, part of South Chesapeake. So you can live in all of Western Branch and still have access to Chesapeake Square, which all this factors into living in this area of Chesapeake is to me one of the best bang for bucks in all of the city. I love this area because you can still get the school district, you can still, still get the feel of what you might want to be in a place like Chesapeake, but you're not going to be paying as much as you might be paying for being in Hickory, Grassfield, or Great Bridge, for example. The median sales price in Western Branch to live in Western Branch and buy a house is 370, just over 370 thousand dollars, which is a significant difference uh, compared to buying in a place like Hickory, Grassfield, or Great Bridge. Now, the cons to living in this part of Chesapeake and Western Branch is it's a tough commute to Virginia Beach, so it can be 35, 40 minutes or more to parts of Virginia Beach. It's doable, but if you hit traffic, it can lead to an hour or more sometimes uh, to get to certain parts of Virginia Beach, especially on the eastern side where it's real far away you know, from the rest of the town. One of the cons to living in Western Branch or West Chesapeake is <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> Here at Trend, so Western Branch has some shopping, some restaurants, not a lot of nightlife, some outdoor stuff, but other than that, you're gonna find yourself going to other cities to get the things to do that you might want. Another con to living in this part of Chesapeake is it has less of everything compared to South Chesapeake. Compare it again, like the Greenbrier Light where, where uh, Chesapeake Square is, that compared to Greenbrier, much less. Other parts of like Western Branch in general has a lot less things, a lot less houses, a lot less restaurants, a lot less everything compared to South Chesapeake where there's more demand for all those things. And so that's one reason why it's a lot cheaper. I have a couple videos here that get into more detail about living in Hampton Roads, Chesapeake and Virginia Beach and the general areas here. If you have more questions to me about living in Chesapeake, feel free to comment below or ask me questions. I have my contact information in the description. You can reach out to me at any point and I will do whatever I can to help you relocate the area. And I will see you on the next video.